Man, I, I really was thinking about making a, a, a long run today, but considering there aren't as many people here as yesterday, in fact, I really didn't see too many people fishing the same places I was fishing yesterday. And I know there's still fish here. I think it's, I think it's unwise to do. You don't leave fish to find fish, so we're not doing it. Plus, I'm getting tired of pulling hydrilla out of my, my crop drive. So we are going to fish here. And we're going to make the most of it. You know, I kept trying to think about, do I want to I wanna make this run? Do I want to make this run? It's, over, oh, it's about three miles. Do I want to make it? Do I want to make it? And, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't want to make it. I know the spot I used to do after my camera died where I was catching bass. There's still other bass in there. So five minutes and we're gonna start. We'll start here and then work our way back in to where we were yesterday catching the big ones. So I'm pretty sure they're just hiding under some dollar pads in thick hydrilla. I missed one. I missed one. Shoot. Took half the Sanko. Oh, probably for the best. All right, got our first fish. It is not big. It is it's probably 12. But I got him on the Sanko, doing exactly what I did yesterday. I was catching those bigger ones. So, it tells me, you know, this will work. Might be a bit of more of a grind to get um, a limit, but it should work. There we go, it's all three quarters. All right, not a giant, but I felt him smack it, so. All right, here we go. Sit down. Yeah, I drill. Come here, big girl. <sighs> Thank you, God. Textbook. Missed the top water. Throw the sink out.
don't jump. Alright. I had one guy that's kind of pushing down on me. I think he saw me catch the, at least the 16. I don't know if he saw me catch the big one. But I really want to kind of hold this spot. I know they're here. That's the thing is I know they're here. This is where I hooked into them yesterday. To a plopper, we need to make get something that's going to make a little bit of surface. I don't think like other fish are feeding. I don't think we need to go too hard. I think we'll just go with the chapo with that bluegill color. It's about the same color of the bait that they're feeding on right now. Stay on. All right. There's four. Eighteen and a half. I can't. Just if I bend in that much to get the extra quarter of an inch. Alright, we're on our way. We need one more. We need one more. Alright, so I got number five. He was just swimming with it. I didn't even know I had one. Uh, he should be 12. Probably sitting just under, uh, probably, I want to say 80, so 24, 24 plus, uh, 24 plus uh, 19 is, fifty. no, it's 40, 24, I don't know, anyway, let's just look at, we'll just submit and we'll look at it. All right, so we're, we're sitting at uh, 170 and 90 yesterday, which means I have 80 today, which means I, I need a 10 inch call. I got two 12s I gotta get rid of. So, you know, if I get another 19 or just one donkey, which I haven't found yet at all, then our problem solved. That's a big fish. Oh, it's not. It's not a huge one, but it's gonna call. Heck yeah. The way he hit it, he's not that big, but the way he hit it, man. It's only 14 and a quarter. Hey, call number one. So 
quick recap of everything that happened. Um, day one, we were sitting in a good position. Sixth place, I was elated. I had over 90 inches, which is what I figured I would need to kind of stay in it and be competitive. I needed about 90 inches each day and having 91 um, felt really good, especially for not having a real big kicker. Like the last time I was there, I think I had 96, but I also had a, a 21 and a 20, 22, I think. Um, so to come all the way to 91 inches in just a solid bag was, was fantastic. I was super excited to, to be in that position. It was a good position to be in. And I fished really clean, didn't miss any fish. Um, I caught a bunch of fish. I figured out a pattern that I think would have worked for day two in an area that I didn't fish hard. So I went back through day two. Day two, the bite was there, um, but we didn't have the wind. And when the water's super clear, the Florida bass, they, they kind of get really skittish. If there's just a little bit of ripple in the water, like when I caught that one on top water, um, they're more than willing to come out and eat. Otherwise, it, it gets a little bit harder, especially when we're kind of sight fishing, kind of pick out spots. So when that breeze died and it got glass calm later in the day, that kind of shut down my bite, at least my big bite. And I wasn't able to kind of find another fish. I probably caught another, I want to say probably 15, uh, 12 to 15 fish after that, but none of them were major upgrades. They were all like quarter of an inch at a time. And I think two 14s is what really hurt me on the second day. And a lot of people, they, uh, they, some people rolled big numbers on the first day and I ended up passing them because they rolled terrible numbers on the second day. And then we had people who rolled terrible numbers on the first day and just absolutely killed it in the second day. Uh, one of the guys I talked to, he got two eight pounders on the second day. Uh, so his spot turned on and he ended up passing me. And you know, the more I look at it, the more I was like, man, if I would have just caught two decent fish between 15 and 20 inches, uh, I, I was potentially looking at as high as like a fifth or fourth place finish. If I would have just doubled, uh, you know, exactly what I did the first day. But that's why it's fishing. You know, it's anybody's game. You're never really out of it. Um, but I'm very happy with my finish. I think I finished uh, as the highest Florida entrant which isn't too bad considering I went up for two hours to pre-fish and look at the spot. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and, you know, I finished 15th in my first ever Hobie event out of 155 people. That That's top 10%. Um, and we're fishing against some of the best kayak anglers out there. I mean, Jody Queen was there. Uh, Fisher and Guillermo were there. Um, Miner was there. He won to do 108 inches. is just a killer bag. He, you know, he had the spot, and he's, he's lucky the fish kind of stayed there uh, since his... his uh, college tournament so because I've had that where you got a killer spot and then when you get there the day of the fish have moved on or they're on a different pattern um, so there's just a bunch of really good fishermen in there and I felt really good to finish that high and, and, and cut a check so I'm really excited to go back and, and fish some other Hobie events uh, I want to thank my sponsor Mondo's for sponsoring the season I think we're going to try to get the team together and go to Seminole that's what I'm really looking at because it's close-ish and uh, I wouldn't have to take off too much time and travel isn't too bad. So I'm, my experience with the Hobie is that it was a really tightly run tournament. Very professional, very kind of to the point. Um, a little dry in some of the meetings, but that's okay. They were, they were trying to be very, very clear about everything. Uh, so there was no kind of guessing, oh, should I do this or should I do that? So I'm very appreciative of that. The board check-in was super easy. The meetings went, uh, went fairly smooth. The award ceremony was actually pretty nice and overall it was just really tightly run um so i'm i'm pretty happy about that and i'm excited to do more hobies the only one thing i <laughs> only the one thing i really missed was having my motor because the as much as i love my my slayer it is not a quick kayak so um it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to have my motor back uh, when i go back up to harris and fish the Bass Nation uh, Central Division second tournament, which is going to be there. I think we're going to stick with the same game plan, and we'll do what we know. We stick with what we know. Try to not overthink it, which was the goal for this year. And you know, the past month, in six weeks, I fished five tournaments, and then in the last three, I've cashed a check in each. So we're going to see if we can keep that rolling throughout the throughout the year, and uh, and keep uh, keep the momentum going. You know. So thanks for watching this. Uh, I want to thank, uh, again, my sponsor, MondosFishing.com, for sponsoring the season. If you're interested in arc rods and new arc reels, the gravity reels, they have those. And some of the baits that are featured on this channel, like the, the little lipless crank, they also have those in stock. So hit them up if you're looking for anything. If you want a discount, there's a code in the, in the description. Um, I want to thank Hobie BOS for bringing this 
to Central Florida uh, and me getting allow me and other people here to experience this. It was a really great tournament. I loved it. And um, I want to thank all my Florida Kite Bass Trail peeps who sent me messages saying, you got this, we're rooting for you on uh, Facebook and Instagram and, and, um, and through comments on my social media posts. I really appreciate that, guys. Sorry I couldn't pull out a, a higher finish for you, but um, we'll, there's more tournaments to be had. So that being said, stay safe out there, and I will catch you guys in the next one.